key among them President Jame. Governor Toure also commended the people of his region for all their support. My speech will, hum will humbly be all about registering my heartfelt thanks to all who made make of 2012 a resounding success. This success I'm gladly trumpeting today would not have been registered without the ever intervention of the star of the nation, the hope of the youth, the savior of the women, and the future of generations yet to born. Hunger was totally scared away from the neck of village. Food was in abundance, and peace and security was all over during this week. I therefore implore on all of you gathered here today to sincerely join me in thanking His Excellency the President, Chief Professor Dr. Alaji Yaya A.J. Yijame, for this donation in foodstuff, meat, and cars. Chairman of the National Organizing Committee, Fabakari Kale, who with his team worked tirelessly, was delighted the conference ended without any major incident. He also hailed the conference participants for their high sense of discipline throughout the week-long gathering. The head of the National Organizing Committee, on behalf of the youths, appealed to government to implement the resolutions the conference delegates have toiled so hard to come up with, for they are tangible recommendations designed to address the plight of young people. I would hereby like to make a special appeal to the Ministry of Youth and Sport, the government of the Republic of the Gambia, partners and all stakeholders that we must not allow this very hard labor of our young people to gather dust in our office drawers. I want to appeal, therefore, that we read these resolutions and take appropriate actions. The Minister of Youth and Sports, who presided over the closing ceremony, equally registered his satisfaction, noting that government, through his ministry, will continue to provide the enabling environment for the youths to actively engage in the productive sectors of the country. As we pack our bags and go home, I have no doubt that we have strengthened our friendships. We have built new friends. We have reaffirmed our allegiance to the course set out for us as youths of this country by His Excellency the President and his government. We have recommitted ourselves to the vision of His Excellency the President. And what are those visions? Those visions are for us, the youth people, as reflected in the theme of this conference, to get ourselves engaged meaningfully in the productive sectors of the economy. So if you go home and measure the success of this NECOF, I assume that you will measure it on the basis that you will have been engaged productively in the productive sectors of this economy. Minister Jame used the platform to implore the conference participants to share their experiences back with their pals in their respective regions, before lashing out a stern warning to youths against detractors bent on derailing the country's development process. He promised that the resolution will not be left to gather dust. Let's protect the integrity, the sovereignty of this country, the independence of this country. I said in my opening, we are a people of great people, of a great nation. Strong history and culture and tradition of the highest sophistication. Yes, in this globalized world, we will get influences coming from all over the four corners of the world. But it is our responsibility to gauge and take... The 10th National Youth Conference and Festival wrapped up with the award of trophies to winners of the various competitions. West Coast Region scooped most of the sporting trophies, winning both the football, athletics, wrestling, and volleyball prizes. North Bank Region's Maria Mandau was crowned Miss Neck of 2012, whilst Upper River Region won the cultural performance. Certificates were also awarded to the participants and institutions which supported the NECOF. Amongst them, personnel of the state broadcaster for giving the event a befitting coverage. This year's NACOF has been hailed as a success, but that success will be measured in 2014 when Lower River Region will play host to the next NACOF. Mumades Jalo, GRTS.
protests between opposition supporters and police turned violent in Togo after the government there denied the opposition licensing to hold a rally. And thousands gathered in Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, to show solidarity with their absentee president who is recuperating in a Cuban hospital. Those and other stories after this break. Welcome back. Pre French President Francois Hollande has said that Paris was ready to intervene alongside their African partners to stop the Islamic insurgents in Mali. The UN Security Council has also convened an emergency meeting to address Bamako's request for assistance to stop rebels from advancing. We have details of that story in this report. French President Francois Hollande sent a clear and firm message to Islamist groups in northern Mali on Wednesday. Oland called the groups terrorists that are trying to deal a fatal blow to the very existence of Mali. On Thursday, Mali's government asked France for help in fighting the insurgents. The request came after the rebels took the northern town of Kona following two days of fighting, which is a major setback for government forces. Kona is about 600 kilometers northeast of the capital, Bamako. We are faced with a blatant aggression. I have decided that France will respond alongside our African partners to the request of the Malian authorities. It will be ready to stop the terrorists if they pursue their offensive. On Thursday evening, the UN Security Council held an emergency meeting to address Bamako's request for assistance faced with the rebels' new advances. The Malian army has fought back the offensive with support of European forces, which are reportedly French. This event underscores once again the need for the rapid deployment of an African force in Mali and of the training mission of the European Union. In Bamago, political instability is on the rise. For two consecutive days, protesters have been demanding that transitional president, Dion Kunda Traore, step down. It is the expression of the people through a national conference that will determine the legitimacy and legality of the regime that will lead to the transition in our country. Interim President Diancunda Traoré is expected to meet with French President Francois Hollande in Paris next Wednesday. Paris has called on all its non-essential personnel in Mali to leave the country. Well, latest reports monitored by GRTS indicate that French troops have already begun operations in northern Mali, with President Hollande saying that the intervention by his troops will last as long as is necessary. Thousands gather in Caracas, the Venezuelan capital, as a show of support for their absentee president, who is recuperating in a Cuban hospital. The rally was held a day after the Supreme Court ruled that the inauguration of, the, of President Chavez was postponed indefinitely. As we hear in the CFI reports, left-wing leaders from all over Latin America were also at hand to support the Bolivarian Revolution. Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, who is in hospital in Cuba, following cancer surgery, was celebrated in the streets of Caracas Thursday. His portrait was posted all over the city as Venezuelans took part in a giant rally. The rally pledged their allegiance to their leader, whose inauguration for a new term in office is postponed indefinitely. Venezuela's Supreme Court ruled that Hugo Chavez can take an oath of office at a later date and the actual government can remain in place. Commander Hugo Chavez, take it easy. Keep up your battle, because here you have a Bolivarian government and a revolutionary people. Despite Hugo Chavez's absence, left-wing leaders from all over Latin America were in Caracas to support the Bolivarian Revolution. The presidents of Bolivia, Nicaragua and Argentina's foreign minister attended the rally. The Argentine people will be with you as long as necessary until President Hugo Chavez returns. 
We are with you. We support you as you have supported the Argentine people. Long live Chavez and long live Venezuela.